I was really afraid that it wasn't gonna actually go because you know how I've been having trouble with it? It just starts like freaking out for some reason. Anyway, it's a thing. Hello and welcome. It is the 4th of March. Uh, we are here. I'm Fallon. If you don't know who I am, I don't think anybody comes here that doesn't know who I am. I, does that sound really vain? You know what I mean? Don't come for me. Um, so hello, welcome. It is the Thursday, the 4th of March, again, and not again. I don't know why I said that. Uh, anywho, <laughs> good start. <laughs> Today we're gonna, you know, okay, you know what I was thinking? I, you, you guys know that I've had my, my Patreon since, well, some of you guys know, I don't know. Most of you guys know that I've had my Patreon since February of 29, February? April. I don't remember early 2019 and I've been wanting to figure out how to make a podcast since then and I have not come up I haven't landed on one thing yet um so yeah I haven't landed on an idea yet I had so I had kicked around some ideas and did some research on uh on an idea was that last year a couple years ago I don't know no it would have been last year I, I wanted to turn into something with a friend of mine and then it just never just never happened uh just because it's so hard to coordinate like a couple of different people's schedules and then like obviously covid happened and it was like a whole thing uh but the idea of that one would have been really really cool if i could have made it happen but it just seems now that i look at it like i already do an hour podcast three times well pre pretty much three times a week like i sit here and i talk uh for an hour before i start gaming so i'm like why doesn't why can't that be it like why don't i just take the audio from what i'm what i'm saying here talking about whatever um and then that's that's the podcast right like i already i already do it i don't I'm like i don't know why i need to come up with something new if that's something that i already do and i answer questions and it's live and it's like kind of off the cuff and 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 whatever which is how i prefer it um i mean i was thinking that maybe i could be a <laughs> A little bit more regimented with the things I talk about uh, during this hour. So, yeah, I, I was like, why don't I just do that? That makes so much more sense. And, like, people can ask me, people ask, you guys ask me questions anyways. And I ask you, you know, what's going on in your life and, and stuff. So it kind of keeps the conversation going. And I, and I love that. And I talk about, like, shit that I found on the internet and whatever. Like, I mean, that <laughs> that's, that's already what I do. So what's, what's, what's the problem? Uh, I think it's just a matter of making it a thing that instead of just kind of like half-assing it maybe i just need to make it a thing um but i don't know what to call it like i mean i don't yeah i don't know what to call it should i call it something else like and i can have because i've been thinking of contacting talina and then getting talina back on getting her back on the channel and like um obviously distance because she's not in the same city as me so i'm like why can't i just do that that that's something can like talk to people i mean it's you know different from what tanya does tanya has like her own style of, in the way that she does things but i mean we're yeah i was just thinking like i don't know why i've been it's like the idea has kind of been there the entire time i don't know maybe i'm wrong you tell me let's before we continue on let's see who got in chat we got all the best 45 welcome thank you for coming small potato 18 hello welcome uh, Nade is here. Nade has a two-month sub anniversary. Thank you so much for your support, continued support. Joel is here. Hi, hi. What's up? Oh, Elson is here. <laughs> Bowman. Fucking Bowman. Uh, <laughs> Trav is here. What's up? Yes, my this busted-ass Misfits hoodie that I've literally had for fucking years. And it's, it's still, it's still, you know... Still kicking. I just have to maybe sew it a little bit or make it look a little bit more presentable. I'm not sure. Um, and Placenta's here. What's up? Joel asks, how about critique movies? Uh, I could do that. Uh, I feel like there's just, there. it's, podcasts are just so saturated. Like there's like a podcast for everybody, you know, a podcast for every interest. Um, uh, and I was thinking of also just like, because at the moment, it's really just me talking about my life and the things going on in my life and the fact that I have 
um, this kind of slash life because meaning not like slash like slash stab 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 but like I, I have this slash existence where I'm this actor and then I'm also a musician and then I'm also like a kind of sort of artist and slash uh, whatever else I can do to put food in my belly and Sarge's belly um, $500 later Oh, sorry. Hi, sweetie. I'm sorry. You sleep, my love. Oh, he's a sleepy boy. You had a hard day. Yeah. He's like, oh, I'm tired. Uh, he's, he has, he did something today that he's never, or not never, he hasn't done it in a very, very long time. Like a legit hour snooze on, on my lap. Um, and wasn't bothered at all that I was like typing and doing things. He slept right, right ass through it. I couldn't believe it. I, that's, he hasn't done that since he was little. So clearly he was really, really zonked. He had a hard morning being poked and prodded and he had some like blood on his, on his little, little throat. I was like, Ooh! it turned into like a, hello. Why is there always people trying to break into my house? Anyway, um, yeah, so what was I saying? Yeah, so I was thinking that that could be it. Like, it's like the slash, something's like where I talk to other people and I will also tell stories of myself and what's going on with me, but all other people who are living that slash existence. For example, uh, I have a, a friend of mine who's a musician as well, but he's also a nurse. So he lives a slash existence where he's a, he has to wear two different hats and um, I haven't spoken to him in a while, but he, he, yeah, he's an actor, but he's also a nurse. And right now, how much his life has changed because of COVID and how, you know, that slash existence is pretty much non-existent because of the work that he does. Or other people who are like cops and, or lawyers and, or, you know, they have like a day job or they, you know, do multiple creative things where they're filmmakers and actors and musicians and, uh, taxidermists or something cool like that. Like, I think it's really interesting how people can balance that kind of lifestyle. So anyway, all the best says, just watch the dusty grant podcast on his Twitch. Very cool. Nice. Yeah. Dusty's a cool guy. I like we, that. That was fun to just get an opportunity to talk to another, you know, artist, uh, who, who's just trying to make it through this really fucking terrible time. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Ninja, Ninja, Reno, Reno, Ninja Reno, welcome. Hello. John says, never going to get sick of that. <laughs> oh, why is my, oh, anyways. Um, Trav is now a, the father of a 26 month old t Twitch baby. Congratulations, Trav. Thank you so much for your continued support. Synergy says, could always do a podcast about your favorite music or albums. I could do a podcast discussing one album, where you like or dislike about them, etc. Music is universal. It'd be, it'd probably join new people. At, it'll probably draw people in. I don't know. That's true. Um, and I have a lot of fun doing those kinds of things. Mm, my only thing would be, I don't want to be, and it, even when I did, remember when I did that, like, Deftones one, where we were kind of running down, like, all of their albums and whatnot, and I didn't want, I didn't want it to turn into something. And I said this to him, I'm like, I don't want this to turn into something where, you know, I'm like shitting on something that they created. Right. Cause you, as you know, there are two albums of theirs I do not care for and I will never listen to. Um, it's just, that's just what it is. Um, you know, it, it's just, it's a personal preference. It doesn't mean that I hate them or I'm hating on them. I don't want it to turn into something like that. Cause somebody had made a snarky comment about like, oh, you claim that you're a, a fan and you're not, you know, you don't support everything. I'm like that. You're never going to support everything that an, uh, an artist comes out with. Like wh who, who, who wrote that rule? Like, uh, it's so dumb. But anyway, whatever. Um, so that was a thing. So yes, I, I agree with you, Synergy. It could be something I could do something as something like that as well, where, um, and it doesn't necessarily, I don't know. I just need to try and figure out a way to separate my, maybe, maybe have to separate myself from everybody else. Um, and not have, not just basically do the same thing, right? Like that, that somebody else could do, but I guess it's different in the sense that it's my, my take as if my word means anything, but, 
Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> we'll see. Lego is here. Hello. Welcome. John says, Talina would definitely be an interesting episode considering what she does for a living now. For sure. And then I realized also that because I'm still an affiliate, um, the the one that the interview, not interview, but like the chat that I did with her in December is gone forever. <laughs> like I didn't download it, of course. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, we can always do another one. It's not a big deal. Um, but maybe somebody downloaded it. I don't know. But um, yeah, in this way that we can be unmasked and, and talk and, and whatnot. So I think that'd be kind of kind of interesting. Um yeah, that's what I have to say about that. Metzger is here. Oh, happy supper anniversary. You've been here for a long ass time, bud. Thank you so much for coming and for your continued support. Real, really appreciate it. Uh, Nade says, oh yeah, I know some people that would be good for this. Like one guy is an exotic car mechanic and also does published photography. Yeah, like that's interesting. Uh, you know, these people, I, I just, I find it interesting. Th th those sorts of things really super interesting um having these kind of slash existences it's kind of interesting but anyway um joel says but you are entitled to an opinion though there will always be snaky sn snaky what <laughs> snarky comments yeah i almost think that it's it just how dusty and i were talking about this yesterday and people saying something snarky just for the sake of saying something snarky because in general they're perhaps the type of people that just can't see the good in anything and you will never ever ever get them to see differently and that's just the way they are and it has everything to do with them and nothing to do with you and there are quite a few people in my life that are like that and I just have to rem keep reminding myself that it has everything to do with them and nothing to do with me <laughs> like you exist in that world and it's, it has nothing to do with me so that's okay you do you <laughs> I'll do me. Uh, anyways. Uh, Met Metzger says, I hate the idea that a fan has to love everything that comes out. Especially, sometimes things suck. Sometimes it's just, like, and I've said this for a long time, that sometimes you're not, you're in the right headspace to receive something in the best possible way. Does that make sense? Like, I was not in the headspace to even entertain any Deftones records at the time that the two that I don't like that came out back to back or not back to back but one after the other I was not in a headspace to just at all receive their music at that time and it had nothing to do with them and it wasn't that I like hated on them or whatever it was just like you know what I just I'm just not feeling it and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna listen to it it's fine it's not a I don't know like it's just a thing I don't know it doesn't mean I hate them no, oh, look at him. He's staring. He's peeping at me. Oh, so anyway, I just think that that's kind of like, you know, you just have to be in the right headspace to uh, to receive it. I think, and that that's been definitely true. Um, yeah, with the Dutch ones that that happened to me. You know what? I have like this weird metallic taste in my mouth. I don't know what that means. It's not blood. Am I being poisoned? What's is it metallic taste? Is that uh is that arsenic? <laughs> is that arsenic? Metallic? I think it is. Metallic taste? Somebody look that up. I'm gonna look it up. How do I know I'm being poisoned? Oh jeez, can you imagine like <laughs> my Google uh Google searches? But this is bottled water, so maybe somebody had it out for me. I don't know. Um, uh, hold on. I missed some people here. Uh, Mark is here. Hello. Morris says, my tired, puffy eyes behold a queen. Oh, thank you, Morris. Thank you. Synergy says, oh, God, those people that are like, you're not a fan if you don't like all their music. I can't with people like that. Thank you, Synergy. I feel redeemed because that's just the sad. I was like, why would you even waste time to type something like that? Like, like your weird ass lizard brain. That's the first thing that you think of. Like, mm, I'm not a fan. It's like, what? I mean, I don't know. 
I just thought it was really inappropriate and stupid. It was like literally only one person, but it stuck out to me because I was like, fuck you, dude. Uh, anyway, Trav says, what others think of me is none of my business. <laughs> True that. Uh. Morris says, things suck, but I hate people who won't even try the new records, if that makes sense. <sighs> I can't even think, but Morris, this goes back to what I was saying about what, or my personal belief that sometimes you're just not in the headspace to, to listen or receive their music or anybody's music for that matter. Um, it's just like a headspace thing. So yeah, if, even if you refuse to, you could have your own reasons and that's your own reasons. But what I don't agree with is if you refuse or you're not in the right headspace to listen to it, but then you go and you shit on it anyways. Like, <laughs> why? <laughs> Waste your fucking time. Like, there's so many other things to do with your life. Like, like really? Um, Morris says, some people are like no good albums since 90s and they grew and they grew bruh. Some people are like no good album since the 90s. Yeah, yeah, uh, I don't, I cannot stand it when people say that either. Or it's like, oh, no new music has come out that I really like, which, okay, I get it. You know, there is, there's a nostalgia associated with those albums for sure that you like um, idolize in your head. There's a nostalgia that you associate with not only just the music, but also just like a time in your life, the things that were going on in your life. It was like, I mean, I can personally say that the nineties were amazing to grow up in and I had t fantastic memories for most of it. Um, and the music is a big part of that, obviously, but to say that the other hasn't been any good music since the nineties, it's just not accurate. I think it's, that's really reductive to be honest, but anywho, um, Metzger says Fallon is literally metal. <laughs> there was an Exiles episode about that. That should literally be an emote in here. <laughs> like just, me just being like, there's an Exiles episode about that. Because there's literally one about that. <laughs> um, Nate says, you're so metal that now everything you taste is also metal. I, yeah, maybe. Met says, like that episode. <laughs> Mets, you get me, bud. Like that X-Files episode. That's fucking hilarious. Mark says, your YouTube will get interesting after that search. Yeah, for sure. Um, Trav says, I've heard arsenic smells like almonds. Bitter almonds. Yes, that's true. Placenta says, if someone is poisoning you, I feel as though it could literally be you or Sarge. True. Um, John says, if I don't like something, I don't argue with it. It's like, eh, this isn't for me. And I move on. There you go. Um, e, huh? Somebody's uh, Moobot is yelling at Cambrio. Hello, welcome, Cambrio. Thank you so much for being here. Um, the the review of your album is on my site. Yeah, I I um I linked it on my main site. So go check out that um that review done by Cambrio. Thank you so much for taking the time to do that because you've literally been the only blog that has wanted to do it. So thank you for that. Uh, Two Real is here. Hello. Joel good at go go <coughs> Joel says, I was one of those no good music guys until I heard your new album. Thank you, Joel. That takes a that takes a man to admit that. <laughs> I was one of those people, but I'm growing, damn it. Good for you. Um too real. When did you guys first create Kitty? Uh, brackish with Kitty. Like, what age? What year? What do you mean by that? Morris asks, More, uh, okay, I'm okay. Headspace for me, too. I meant the people who constantly shit on things, but haven't even gave or will ever give things a chance. Oh, hundo P. Can't stand those people. Cannot. Nate says, I used to hate Billie Eilish since I bought into the whole hate hype. But the more I listened to her, the grew to like her a lot, her and her brother. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's this, I can't, I can't think of a, an artist that I've hated on where I've just like jumped on a bandwagon about hating X, Y, Z. Although I've never understood Kanye West. It's just never been something that has ever 
you know, people praise him for being, you know, great at writing beats and all this. I just don't get it. It's nothing against people that like his music. You do you. It's just not my thing. Um, I only heard Billie Eilish for the first time not that long ago, and I didn't even realize it was her. I thought it was Lily Allen, and I felt really bad. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I like it. I dig it. I kind of feel that way about, like, I remember it was just years ago, this girl that I was hanging out with for a minute uh, was saying that she hated Lana Del Rey for some reason. I was like, who's that? And she's like, oh, she's like a stupid singer. She's got a stupid face. She's just like, fucking hate her. And I'm like, yeah, I hate her too. And I'm like, I don't even know who she is. Um, it turns out she's a terrible person, but um, apparently, allegedly, with peace and love. I don't know if that if that's a thing. But um, <laughs> anyway, so then I listened to her music and I'm like, oh, okay. I don't like her music. It's just it's kind of moody and like... You know, something you listen to when you're in the bath and it's in the dark or something. Like, that's 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 how I describe Lana Del Rey's music. But, um, anyway, so I guess that's kind of my version. Was like, oh, I don't really like her because my one friend said that she didn't like her. And then, but now I nothing her. I don't care. Um, Summertime Sadness is a banger. I don't care. Um, and video games. Great song. Mitch says, I was like that with Rosenrot. Did not like it on the first listen. Listen again a year or two later and I finally appreciate it. See? You were in the right space to hear it. And, you know, it's one of those, hi, baby, go sleep. Go back sleep. Sleep, sleep. Oh, It's amazing how much this, this drug affects him. It's like, he's like a different cat. It's great. He didn't, he, yesterday, for the entire time that he was under the influence, he's still under the influence of this drug, because I gave it to him this morning, too. Um, he didn't purr at all. And you guys know how loud he purrs. Like, he's just like, <laughs> really, really loud purr. But he didn't meow at all. Like, he was look. usually you guys hear him. When he looks at me, he's like, meow, he'll meow at me. But he didn't meow at all, which was very unnerving. Anyway, um, Morris says, I'm a Star Wars and Trek fan. People complain no matter what, used to it. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I feel like nerds, nerds, like people that are super into a specific, like fandom specifically is, is super bad for that kind of thing. Like just complain. Like I think that Star Wars fans are particularly bad. I'm not a Star Wars fan, so I can say that. So there. Um, not, not all, hashtag not all Star Wars fans, but like, most. <laughs> They're all kind of dicks. I'm telling you, my water is... Maybe I just didn't wash this properly and it's like... Like soap that I'm tasting? I don't know. Sauron says, The thing I can't stand is when a new artist is blatantly just trying to be an older artist because they have no identity of their own. Hmm. Quantify. I don't... What do you mean? Because it's one thing to be you know, inspired by something or somebody else. Um, like, uh, who's the one record I heard? It's by this Danish band called Private. It's actually not one guy. It's one guy. It's not really a band. But I remember hearing it and I'm like, yo, this is Michael Jackson. Like, straight up. Every single song is Michael Jackson. But very well done. And it was enough that you could appreciate the fact that it was Michael Jackson or like uh, an interpretation of what Michael Jackson would, I guess, sounded like back in the day. But it's like a new kind of updated version. Um, and I didn't hate it. I actually loved the record. I thought it was great. Even if it was kind of a blatant Mike MJ rip, like 100%. Um, even sings like him, kind of, a little bit. Um, yeah, so it was like, hmm. Or, hmm. But, I mean, there are just, there are a ton of bands that are obviously influenced by XYZ, but, you know, it's still good. If, you know, and then if, usually from that, from that particular album or, or whatever, they grow into their own in some way. It may be subtle in some cases, or I don't know, maybe non-existent in some cases. But uh, I, I think like eventually they'll kind of grow out of it. Um, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? 
Oh, what year did we write? Oh, God. Okay, so probably 97 or 98. That's, I think Bre Breckish was one of our oldest songs. I mean, in, in it's like pure non like electrode version. It was just, yeah, just very plain. And it's kind of cool, actually, when you think about that, like that was something that we wrote when we were literally children. Um, like 12, th th 12 or 13. So <clears throat> it's kind of amazing. I don't know. I would really like to meet 12 year old Fallon. She was pretty cool. I don't know about me now though. John says Ed Sheeran is the only artist I have a deep hatred for. Honestly, fuck him. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. Just fuck Ed Sheeran, man. Fuck that guy. <laughs> if Ed Sheeran were to Oh, someone's awake. Hello. He's still a little bit wobbly. Mm. Do I need to placate you with more food? He's literally eaten three cans of food today. Like he is just like he's going to vomit everywhere eventually. But you know what? I'm just because I know that he's been through a lot. I'm just going to give it to him. It's fine. Um, what was I saying? John, if Ed Sheeran were to just like want to hang out with you for some reason would you do it if he's like listen john i know you don't like me let's hang out and maybe maybe you'll change your mind about me would you do it i'm, I'm just curious i always think that these kinds of these beefs are really hilarious because like you've obviously never met the guy correct me if i'm wrong but you've never met him you don't know him so it's an idea perhaps i'm speculating it's an idea that you have about him that makes you not like him or something that you've seen, you're like, okay, he seems like a dick. Yes. Just answer in the chat. I'm going to go feed him more food. Hi, my sweet. Why are you bleeding? Why are you bleeding? Oh, my God. Literally every PetSmart in this entire city of almost 3 million people is out of his food. Every single one. Either they'll have one can or like a, a can here and there um and then even if i want to order it from their head office they're completely out i don't know what it is specifically there must be something wrong with in the supply chain of like i don't know um but i haven't been able to get his food his like good food for that's been pro pretty much keeping him alive for the last year <laughs> which costs me almost 150 dollars a month it's like ex super expensive um but you know he's doing really really well and now i'm having to feed him the mcdonald's in the in the meantime which doesn't really seem to keep him sated at all usually i feed him like twice a day and now i've had literally fed him three cans of food <laughs> so there's that um trav says there was a kanye daft punk song that was good really like he worked with them actively or he just sampled them um, Nate says, when I first heard an Interrupter song, I thought, oh shit, the Distillers are back. That's true. Legit, I've thought the exact same thing. And it's not a bad thing, though, because the Distillers are fucking great. But honestly, haven't heard an album from them in a while. But then hearing the Interrupters was, like, even kind of better in a way. Um, in, in a different, they're just a different, like, they definitely started out as, like, the, a band that kind of sounds like the Distillers. But now they're kind of their own cool thing i don't know i really like them more says i used to hate eminem and the beatles mostly for the fans and i heard so many classics i can't deny now super stan well, i like that emoji that's really nice um i can't say i like eminem never have um beatles i'm always <sighs> kind of on the fence about and like there are definitely songs that i like of theirs but am i one of those people that's gonna be like <sighs> I don't really believe the hype. I'm like one of those people. I don't like those people. I'll try not to be, but are you good? He's like dragging his feet. Like he can't even walk properly. It's like kind of funny, but also not. Um, Too Real says, I love all music for the most part. Yeah, I try to. Like even, even country and you know, I'm not a fan of country pop some pop country i'm like okay yeah i can i can get into this but just like the straight up like i love my truck and shit like that 
And I, I know that's very stereotypical, but, you know, there's a song that John Oliver made fun of called Truck Yeah, and I was dead. I was like, what is, what is this? Is this real? Truck Yeah. <laughs> a love letter to your truck. What? Is that not the most awful thing you've ever heard? Yeah. Um... Mitch says, the first time Lana Del Rey was the musical guest on NSNL, I thought it was a skit. It was so bizarre. Oh, shit. Now I got to see that. Okay, I'm going to make a note to watch that. <laughs> because, yeah, that sounds like it would be really funny. John says, Disney fans, the absolute worst. K-pop stands, too. Fucking weirdos, all of them. Wow, John, you are on a rampage today. <laughs> Hey, I don't mind K-pop fans. They fight white supremacy, so. <laughs> anyway, um, Synergy says, I see a lot of that in the wrestling fan. No one is ever happy, or they always bitching about one company or another. Oh, yeah. They're always going to find something to, to fucking yell about. I thought Daisy Ridley did a fantastic job as Rey. Never understood the hate for her. Never seen it. Whatever one you're talking about. Although, I do have it on Blu-ray now. Hi! Are you okay? It's hard to go sleep. You can't even walk. You can't even walk properly. Go sleep. Poor thing. Yeah, I never saw it. But I do have, like I said, I have it on Blu-ray. I should take a day. Watch it. Um... Placenta says, maybe it is Dasani and it's supposed to taste like metal. Legit. Oh, maybe. Good point. Kind of has a Dasani kind of tint. Tint? Scent. <laughs> tint. <laughs> it's still clear. We're good. Hi, baby. Hi. Do you want to come up here? No. Babies, you're so but No, don't go under the bed! Oh. I hate him going under the bed because he always gets the antics underneath there. You, you get covered in dust. I don't know if you can hear him dragging his, his feet. That's him not being able to walk properly. It's really sad. Oh. Like, yesterday he was trying to walk, but then, like, his paws would fold underneath them, and he would just fall forward. I was like, oh, I hate it. So I had to carry him everywhere. It was, we had an amazing bonding experience. The side of his face is all bloody. I don't know why. What did you do to your face? Huh? Is it weird? Because I think he might have been trying, like, pushing. Sometimes he tries to push, like, through the grate. In his in his like carrier, so probably cut his face. You should never be a cutter, honestly. You're a cat. Do you want to come on mommy's lap? You gotta clean your butt first. You're not gonna sit on me with your nasty bu yeah bum crumbs. I don't need bum crumbs on me. You're gonna fall, bro. No, no, oh god. Okay, guys, give me a second. Let me check your bum crumbs. Come here. Uh. Oh, it's so dirty, Sarge. Can't believe you're letting me do this without screaming at me. Sorry guys, I've got to attend to my child. You want to say hi to your fans? <laughs> say hi to your fans! Okay, Mimi. Mimi. Oh, what? Okay, you kind of stink, bro. Do you have poop? Is there poop somewhere that I missed? Okay, let me move you. Oh, there we go. I think he's aged like 25 years in these two days. There we go. 
I'll have to clean this. I'll have to clean this sweater after. <laughs> oh no, I didn't do a good job of cleaning. It stinks. Okay, well he's just gonna sit here and relax. All right, where was I? Past two years, uh, Morris says, past two years is so crazy. I don't get the time for hating things anymore. It seems sad. I just want to love things now. Aw, that's great. Um, Too, Re Too Real says, I don't like new rap. Yeah, there's a lot of really strange rap out there. Morris says, hardcore rap fan. I like the, some of the new stuff. Depends what you hear. Like, out of curiosity, because I remember I was telling you about that uh, YouTube channel that I was watching for a while called Trap Lore Ross. And it's like this white guy from UK who's obsessed with hip hop and he'll do like history of hip hop be uh, beefs. So because I'm, I'm, you know, because I like history, it's it's basically uh, hip hop history, essentially. So he'll go through all like the new SoundCloud rappers and all this shit that they get up to. Um, Especially, he did a quick, a whole deep dive on, uh, oh, what's his name, uh, 6 9 and, like, his whole, like, world, which is fucking wild to me. Uh, and the reason why I got that, I uh, got there was because of Travis Barker was doing some collab with some SoundCloud, SoundCloud rapper that I was like, who the fuck is this kid? And remember, I, was ta I talked about this on a stream a long time ago, but it was, like, a guy who was, we who was wearing diamond-studded uh brass knuckles like just ins insane amount i'm like what he this kid is like 19 where the fuck is he getting all this money from anyway so he has these things and he's like punching like a tv screen or something and then travis barker's like <laughs> it's so funny and i'm like what you're like he's like my age how old is he how old is travis barker uh he's, he's like he, no he's older than me he has to be Travis Barker? Travis. Uh, Travis Barker gushes over... Co Travis Barker is dating Kourtney Kardashian? <laughs> what? Oh, Jesus, I've heard it all. He's 45. Okay, he's 45, hanging out with some 19-year-old kid, and, like... It, it, that shit's just wrong. I'm sorry, it's wrong. <laughs> it's... It ain't right. Anyway, that's what started me on the deep dive into that SoundCloud rap and mumble rap and all that stuff. I was like, I don't even know what any of this means. But it was still fascinating to me from a historical point of view. Uh, John says, nothing wrong with wearing your influences in your sleep, but there's a fine line between inspiration purely ripping off other artists. For sure. Mara says, same. It's mostly edgelords who think the original Star Wars are perfection and would never be used. Yeah, true. Turil says, I love Brackish. Awesome. Uh, Matt says, Daisy really definitely didn't deserve hate. If anything, the writers deserve all the hate. Uh, John says, hungry boy. Are you hungry? Is that why you're hating everybody? <laughs> um, Joel says, wait, why were you drugging him? I missed something. He was a little bit aggressive uh, at the vet a couple of days ago and or too anxious for them to do anything. Um, he gets bitey when he gets anxious and, and scared. So they were like, okay, we're going to send him home with some, uh, some drugs so that he's, he'll be nice and calm when he's here. And he was extremely calm, like, just like butter, um, you know, <laughs> John says, putting me on the spot much. <laughs> hey, you brought it up, bud. John says, I mean, maybe, but I'd still tell him his music is fucking trash. <laughs> John, do you need a moment? <laughs> Oh, it's funny. Morris says, yeah, see, going after the actors is insane. They're just doing their jobs. 100%. Travis says, I've often said I've seen some musicians that seem cool and would hang even though I'm not, I may not be, I even though I may not be a big fan. Name, give me, give me an artist that you feel that way about, Trav. Again, putting you on the spot now. Mark says, we have three kinds of food that we'd have to cycle through because we can't find them in the store. That's a good, that's a good way to do it, actually, Mark. Like, I have to find, clearly, he really likes this food, so I'm just going to have to buy that until they, until the food comes back. I don't know. I mean, it's going to save me a lot of money, which is nice, but, you know, I'll have to buy more litter as a result because he shits like a fucking queen. But <laughs> this <laughs> shits like a queen. Well, that's interesting. Anyway, um, uh, so 
I say? Anyway, yeah, it's a, it's a good uh, good thing to do, Mark, actually. Now that I think about it, I should probably just do that. Just go to my other go-tos and until his main food comes back. If it ever comes back. God, I hope it does. Because, yeah, anyway. Morris says, never heard Daft Punk until Kanye. Are you kidding me? Daft Punk is amazing. Um, rest in peace. Some people are just old men or women yelling at clouds. So true. John says, I will not tolerate Beatles slander in this Twitch chat. They John, you're on a rampage today. What's wrong with you, bud? Do you need a moment? <laughs> Too Real says, I love the Beatles. Lego says, I'm a back. What's up? Welcome back. Uh, Nate says, Casey Musgraves is my favorite country artist. Don't know who that is. Siren says, true. It's one thing to be influenced, but I mean when they try so hard, you can't even tell the difference. Like the time I heard Phoebe Bridgers, I don't know who that is. It was clearly obvious that she was trying to be Emma, Emma Gemma Hayes. Who's Gemma Hayes? Mm, you're, mm, I'm losing this. I'm losing these references. Uh, she's decently famous in her own country, but not here. Now here's this kid going on stage at SNL doing the spot on Gemma impression. Yeah, that, uh -huh. I mean, here's another question for chat. How do you feel about artists like, um, and it's no, it's no secret. I, I actually like Miley Cyrus. I think she's great. I think she's just like a, a like a little hurricane of, I don't even know what's going on with her, but I kind of like it. Like, it's just chaos. Kind of how I felt about, um, oops, I just rubbed my lipstick all over my face. What the hell was her name? Not Kellis. Help. <laughs> what was her name? Don't stop moving, moving, keep it going, go, 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 Something with a K, but anyways, I like her too because she's also like mental, like in a in a great way. And I watched some show with her on it. And I'm like, I love her energy. She's like insane. <laughs> it's wonderful. And I feel that way about Miley Cyrus. But there, I I have heard twitterings of people like really angry of, about her because she because and I, we've talked about this before in this chat. Um, the amount of gatekeeping that happens with rock musicians and like metalheads and punk punks and stuff like we we feel like we need to protect it because it's like ours and anytime anybody tries to even say that it's good or or take it away from that genre like we get fiercely protective of which I just I think is a very interesting reaction to have but uh like um for example, so using Miley Cyrus as an example, she's has very eclectic influences and she's kind of all over the place and she's a little bit crazy, which love her. Uh, but like, for example, she covered in that uh, Black Mirror episode, she did that like a mashup kind of using the back of um, a Nine Inch Nails song and people were like, oh my God, I can't believe she did it. She ruined a really good song and whatever. And I'm like, there's that gatekeeping again. Like nobody else can touch this song because it's fucking apparently sacred and like the gods are going to die if you touch the, and I just, I just don't understand that personally. Again, it's my opinion. I don't understand that mentality. I think it's just, it's not for me. Anyway, how do you guys feel about something like that? So for example, like Taylor Swift decides to do like her version of like a Slayer song. Ooh, that, how would that turn out? It's like, <laughs> or like a Cannibal Corpse song. <laughs> Dude, I would pay her to do that. Like, okay, so Tay, Swifty, whatever the fuck you want to be called. I don't even, I don't know any of her music. So we'll just, I'll just pretend like I do. Like I'd be like, yo, Tay, I got this new song for you. It's called Hammer Smash Face. I think you might really like it, it'll be like a really really good song to put on your many m you know many platinum selling albums yeah like yeah oh I've got others for you too there's um I can't even think of any other <laughs> other Cannibal Corpse names 
Do you fuck with the knife? Something of theirs? Cannibal... Cannibal Holocaust? What? Um... <sighs> fuck with the knife is one of theirs, right? Butchered at birth. Violence unimagined. <laughs> If she did this like whole like death metal album, they're oh my god, I would I would pay good money to see that. And I don't even like okay, maybe not good money, but I would pay to see that. If she had a side project. Like if she just sneakily came out with and, and she would probably do something weird like that. Like, you know, take a, a day uh because uh, I am also under the impression that she is uh the same as Anton LaVey's daughter. Have you ever seen that side by side? Are the two of them? They're exactly the same. Um, so if she just magically came out with a death metal record and it was under like a, her own name and she wrote all the songs and like, I can see Taylor Swift doing that. I would get behind that. I don't know if I would, uh, would I pay for it? I would listen to it. Sure, I would. Yeah. Um, John says, I mean, uh, <laughs> truck, yeah. You were Okay, I'm, I really want to play it, but I can't. Anyway, all you need to know is that it's called Truck Yeah. Um, no, I won't play it. I don't want to get dim sad. John says, I mean, Cold Chamber literally wrote a song called Big Truck, and it's kind of rips. It's a good song, though. Yeah. Trap says, when you play a country vinyl backwards, you get your wife back, truck back, and dog back. I believe it. Um, Siren says, like, if I played one song from each, you would not only, you would not only not know there were different artists, you'd think they were from the same album. That tr isn't tribute or influence, it's ripoff. Yeah, I... <sighs> like, even if you are going to be influenced, I guess you should at least try to, like, <laughs> do it something you're, like, in your own style or recognizable. I don't know. Um, uh, Acro, what's up? Uh, Saren says, dude, I met Phoebe Bridgers like four years ago. We talked about Motorhead and some punk band stuff. She's legit. Oh, shit. The tea. The tea is hot. Um, yeah, Acro, it was, it was a lot. Be, listening to Steel Panther at 6.45 in the morning, I was just not, I'm not having it. And there were, there was actually him who was into su super duper metalhead. Um, and then there was another guy. I can't, um... oh, he, the other guy, other metalhead was the one, did I ever tell you the story that he went to school with Justin Bieber? Did I ever tell you this story? He's, he told me, he's like, yeah, I went to high school with him. He's a fucking idiot. Uh, and he hung out in a group of guys, like a bunch of like football player type types. Even though he was a metalhead, he also was kind of a jock too, uh, which, which is terrible when I think about it. Uh, anyway, so he was saying that he was just like, this kid would mouth off everybody. We all like hated him because he was just like a, a fucking douchebag. Anyways, uh, they threw him into a dumpster. <laughs> I was like, dude, that's terrible. He's like, he fucking mouthed off to us, man. We threw him in the dumpster. So I'm like, well, that's your claim to fame now. I guess you were the one that threw Justin Bieber into a, into a dumpster. Like, I mean, that's cool. Not that, I mean, whatever, Justin Bieber, whatever. Uh, peace and love, man. I don't have anything against you, but it's still funny. Um, Ilks777, what's up? Not a Steel Panther fan. Um... Not my cup of tea. Neither, me neither. I, I was like, this is, I, I felt like I was like literally 80 years old. Cause I'm like, this is fucking vulgar and disgusting. Like, I don't even want to hear any of what these people have to say. <laughs> like, it's just gross. It's just, yeah, that's my opinion. Whatever. You can listen to Steel Panther if you want, but not in my presence. Thank you. Um, and yes, Acro Sarge is still very much wasted. He's all oh, baby. <laughs> It literally makes me want to cry looking at him. He's just like... And he's drooling all over me. Uh, are you okay, babes? And it's also... this. These drugs are going to take a, like a longer time to... Like, dissipate or to wear off. Because of his like kidney problems. It's 
can take like 48 hours or something at the most to get out of his system and he has um like partially even when he woke up this morning he still was all like wobbly even though it was more than more than 12 hours almost well yeah so he has like an overlapping dose too so it's even going to be maybe tomorrow morning he'll be normal but he's still not normal <sighs> it's heartbreaking like, I thought he was dead this morning, so I started crying, of course. I was like, oh, my God. Then he, he just kind of, like, woke up. And I'm like, oh, my God, he's still alive. Oh, my God. Oh. Sauron says, listen to any Gemma Hayes song. You'll hear what I mean. If I wasn't watching her on TV, I wouldn't have known myself. Sauron says, I'm definitely a K-pop fan. Don't care who has a problem with it. I'll listen to what I want to hear and no one, not what anyone else does. Hey, that's your prerogative, bud. You listen to... I hey, I... I only know two. I know Blackpink and I know BTS. That's it. I can't say I've ever listened to BTS, but I have listened to Blackpink. Um, and it was their most recent single and the one they did with Gaga, I think. Was it Gaga? Somebody. It was another, like, American artist. Um, <sighs> anywho. Sweet baby Sarge. Morris says, just notice Misfit shirts. The fans seem, I'll check them to, I'll check them despite them one day. Fans of the Misfits? I don't think I've ever noticed any, anything wrong with their fans. <laughs> Agra says, Travis Barker's dating life is a mess. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. Like he dated that, what's her name? Uh, Mokler for a while. Uh, like a playmate or something and I met him he was a very nice guy just normal very quiet like was like kind of hey you know he's not as good looking as Hoppus though Hoppus has always been my man uh, just saying of all the blink-182 dudes <laughs> um, John says just venting but just venting it's okay man safe space for venting Morris says, I hated Takashi with the rainbow hair, then hated hate watching turn into a few catchy songs. <laughs> hey, I listened to because again, when I was watching this this YouTube channel, he talked about um the this his this tra trap historian or whatever. He was talking about uh some of Takashi's uh, six nine songs, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna look it up because did he name his song Gummo just like for fun, or is he naming it after the movie? And I'm like, oh, okay, he actually knows about the movie. That's interesting. And then I didn't expect that for some reason. I was like, oh, that's such an obscure reference. Like, what? And then I was like, that's an okay song. But then the song that he just put out recently, I was like, oh, okay, this isn't too bad, actually. Like, I would listen to this, <laughs> which made me feel terrible. I was like, oh, God, I'm listening to, like, a freaking terrible person's music. But, um purely out of curiosity because he's such a fucking character like he's not even i don't even think he's from this planet like he's just weird but uh anyways <laughs> joel says shits like a queen can be the name of the <laughs> oh, that's funny oh that's really good trav says uh lady gaga miley cyrus and posty oh yeah i would i would talk to posty for sure um Kesha, John, thank you so much. Kesha, think, I couldn't think of her name. I thought Kellis. So like it's Kellis. That's Kesha. It's Kesha. Yeah, uh, I love Kesha. I think she's crazy, and she's actually she's well, not actually. I shouldn't say that. She's fucking talented, and I don't I don't give a shit. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, Trav says. I mean, the fact that these musical artists are music fans is a reason enough to want to hang. Trav, I like your I like your way of thinking. Morris says, I was all about Biggie and Pac in the 90s, but as an adult, relatable stuff like Public Enemy and Tribe Called Quest just hits more. Oh, yeah. Well, I, you know, my sisters were really big into, like, that kind of music when I was growing up. Like, Tribe Called Quest. I remember, was, what was the fucking album that my, pa my parents were very weird people. Um, you know, they would uh, get really mad whenever I would listen to Live Through This, for example. They would be like, turn it down! It's so loud and she's swearing! I'm like, she literally swears only like once or twice on that album. 
Like, what do you want from me? Um, I remember my sister had the tape, right? And the tape of uh, Tribe, Tribe Called Quest's Midnight Marauders. That's the name of the album. She had the she had the tape that was inside like the master bathroom where everybody there was only one shower for like six people it was a whole thing anyways so she had the tape like inside the bathroom or whatever and then my dad said something about he was just like that that album cover is like um, vulgar or something and this is what the album cover looks like I'm like dad you realize that's not a dick right. <laughs> literally not a dick but he thought it was a dick I think and I, I mean thinking back on it now it's it's hilarious but the time I I did it did not compute why he thought there was vulgar but now I'm like oh my god he thinks it was a dick <laughs> it's not a dick just so we're clear um my parents are very weird people that way I guess Echo says, Kesha claims to have had sex with ghost smoke multiple times so I watched her because interview for how she's kind of criminal she, exactly like she's she's a little bit like and that's why i love her i think she's just like that's the same thing i feel about grimes like love her i love her music i really do actually like her music even though i'm salty about the fact that she gets funded by the government but anyways um <laughs> that's a whole other thing um but watching her being interviewed is she's it, it's like a wow <laughs> like what she's definitely from another planet no hate, peace and love, but you know, she's from another planet. Uh, Synergy says, I agree about Miley. I didn't used to like her, but ended up liking her once her sound changed. She got away from all the Disney stuff and got freedom to basically do her own thing. Yeah, 100%. I, I, I'm unapologetically a Miley fan. I don't care. Miley's cover, uh, Mitch says, Miley's cover of Jolene is wonderful. I wouldn't have expected that from Hannah Montana. See, I didn't know that she was a Disney star before. But I imagine something like that, as with, like, Selena Gomez and other former Disney people, uh, that must be such a, a difficult thing to grow out of. Like, you, you, that will always follow you, no matter what... Getting crusty. That will always follow you, no matter what you do. That will always be your origin story. Like, my origin story will always be that I was, like, a metal musician. And when I get my Oscar, I hope they say that too. <gasps> How's that for ego? But I, you know, people, I'm sure she gets tired of, of people assuming that that's her only legacy, right? Um, that she can't grow out of that and be something else. But she's, she has clearly shown that she can, right? Um... Nate, uh, Nade says, Lana Del, Rey, Lana Del Rey did a cover of Sublime. Really? Hmm. I feel like Sublime can't be covered. Do you guys agree? I just feel like it's just like the magic of that band is just un uncoverable. Fight me in the in the chat if you think if you think differently. But I I just yeah. <laughs> Akra says, people can cover whatever they want. It either works or fails miserably. Yeah, but under what criteria do you say that it fails? Because, again, it's all subjective. Whatever you think <laughs> whatever you think works, somebody else won't really like. I don't know. Unless it's sublime. Um, <laughs> John says, Taylor Swift covering I Come Blood. Make it... <laughs> Somebody tweet at her and ask her, listen, I have a proposal for you, Taylor Swift, make a death metal record. We want to hear it. Sauron says, unless they do a cover of a song and destroy every single copy of the original, there's no way they can ruin it. You can still listen to the original. Yeah, because it's an interpretation, just like art. Any art is just interpretation. I mean, there's always going to be somebody that absolutely loves it absolutely hates it i guess but anywho um covers still need to pay respects to the original same with remakes so i don't think certain people should do certain covers 
certain people. Explain. Um, Mitch says, I would love to hear Ariana Glover cover. Ooh. Okay, so you, you're, you're talking about Nine Inch Nails Closer. Actually, Mitch, I, I would buy that. L like, not even being funny, I'm, I would actually buy that. I think that she could probably do, like, she in collaboration with her writing team could probably come up with something interesting. I mean, I would still listen to it. I don't know. Hi, are you okay? Oh, my little baby. See, he's doing the, like, laying on my lap thing, which is, yeah, he hasn't done that in a while. Anywho, um, Acro says, I want to see T-Swift do good girls. <laughs> do, I'm telling you, I would pay good money to see it. I want to see it. I don't want to hear it. I want to see it. I want to see her do the whole thing. Like, do a full kind of Taylor Momsen thing. You know how Taylor Momsen was on gossip girl forever and she was like this kind of sweet whatever and then all of a sudden she's just like i'm goth <laughs> love that transformation i co-sign that one it's great nate says also Haley williams <coughs> Haley williams solo stuff i like so much more than what she did in paramore so she was in paramore this is coming from me who used to travel to see paramore play at like 50 person little venues Aw. um what was the one song that she did that was really popular paper help but i think that that was like kind of her breakthrough i mean paramore was also obviously very um Haley williams pooping what the fuck man what are people <laughs> what are people searching on google I was listening to a podcast earlier, and they were talking about two girls, one cup. Can I talk about this? Can I talk about this on Twitch? I don't even know. <laughs> I'm just talking about it. I'm not showing it. I'm like, fuck, that's something that I wanted to get out of my head, but okay. It was just one of those things, like, oh, because the podcast was talking about, like, the great, the like, early frontier of, of the internet and how, um, you know, sites like uh, something, not something awful, um sites like weirdlinks.com remember that do you guys ever remember that um that website where it was they would just link all kinds of stuff like maybe on newgrounds or any of those kind of early flash sites and then they would have a whole section on like weird stuff or like and then it would inevitably something like rotten.com and all those like really <laughs> really things that should just never be seen by young like like young minds like it's just who in the right mind wants to look at that me because i was curious so i clicked on it and i'm like oh no i'll never be able to unsee it oh god anyways so that was a uh, also two girls one cup was one of those things where i was like i'm gonna click on this because that's a smart thing to do in fact i think we watched it like a friend a couple of friends of mine because we were curious and then we're like sat kind of wide-eyed and in silence after <laughs> like what the fuck was that i also learned that two girls one cup was a trailer for a longer version of a movie which is disgusting so there's that what was i searching all right i was looking for the song that Haley williams did i like that song a lot not that i didn't like paramore of course but anyway uh, Morris says, Beeb's doing metal. I'm down. Seeing him with rock shirts. Seems legit. Like, I feel like, you know, every... I would th consider it kind of a nice challenge. Um, like a songwriting challenge for me to write different kinds of songs. So, write a country song. Write a... I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know anything about really hip-hop or any, like, rap or whatever. I don't know anything about it. But I think it would be a nice challenge to try and write stuff like that. And I feel like every artist should try and do that just to like step outside of their comfort zone and kind of not borrow, but be influenced by other styles. I don't know. Or like funk. I would love to try and write a funk song or funk album. That'd be fun. Sauron says, my buddy is a huge Dio fan. I played another group's cover of Holy Diver. He said it's a, it's a Dio only song. <laughs> 
<clears throat> that Ronnie Dio is a medical medical god, a metal god. So I played Dio's music from when he was in Ronnie and the Red Caps and Ronnie Dio and the Prophets. And it was like telling a kid there was no Santa Claus. Oh, <laughs> you ruined his day. <laughs> Morris says, can't get into Dio, much of an 80s rock. Not in my, f not in, not in any frame of hairband. Oh, but I love the crew. I don't care what anybody says. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Um, I don't know what, what you guys are talking about here. So Mitch says, Sarge is, is getting ready to guest star on Super Troopers. Oh, yeah. I'm freaking out, man. Um, Sauron says, they guessed on the song, Gaga song, Sour Candy. It was, oh, so it was Gaga. Okay. It was good. Then Celia was guessed on the song called Ice Cream and it absolutely sucked. Oh, interesting. Um, I don't know how I feel about... I, I don't know. I don't really feel anything about Selena Gomez, to be perfectly honest. Um, Cthulhu, welcome. As far as covers go, check out Harakiri's cover of Song to Say Goodbye by Placebo. <gasps> I love Placebo. Fuck. Harakiri for the sky. Okay. I fucking love, love Placebo. They are... And I've, ta I've talked about them, I think not on stream but on in discord for sure they're just oh, so good musician morris says musicians all seem off or problematic lamau with takashi and stuff it's all theater bowie bowie wore bowie bowie wore dresses imagine now yeah it is it does seem almost well because these people are entertainers but like sometimes the line between theater or the the, the line between reality and and show is very, very badly blurred. And you don't know what's real. You don't know what they're, they're flexing about. Or like, it's just, it just gets crazy. Um, but damn, it makes good TV. Unfortunately. John says, sublime or sublimely terrible. Not even sorry. I hear that in your accent, John. Uh, we expect shout outs during your Oscar speech. Hell fucking yeah, of course. Jesus. Morris says, Fallon is cool, but some Misfit and Slayer fans are all about being edgelords, just randomly screaming and putting the skull on anything. <laughs> oh, I see there was a pretty large swath of uh, metalheads that are like, are like that too, just in general. I mean, that I wouldn't say all, but hashtag not all metalheads, but, you know, a lot of them are like that. Finding Kiki, what's up? Hey! Oh my goodness, love that em emote. Love it. So, Mets, uh, what was I saying? Okay, what is going on with my frame rate? Why are you yelling at me? This freaking guy. Uh, CPU bullshit. Okay, anyway. Um, Matt says, I guess by certain people, I mean certain styles, not necessarily people. Like there's a rap version of everybody wants to rule and it is atrocious. Okay. I need to hear that. Nade says, she sang the hook on Bob's one song. Bob. John says, well, this took a fucking turn. <laughs> Akko says, I do not want to see T-Swift covering two girls, one cup. <laughs> these like young people would know what that is like that would that would be like the ultimate troll like if you're on the red carpet or whatever you're like excuse me excuse me taylor swift hi hi valen bowman from uh, something awful news um <laughs> have you have you heard the song two girls one cup <laughs> she'll be like what two girls one cup <laughs> oh my god that would be awful Anyways, let's get to the portion where I'm actually going to talk about Simulacrum as a whole. If you don't want to hear this part, you don't care, that's fine. Thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, and if you, yeah, maybe we'll return to talk about uh, Two Girls, One Cup later. Anyways, so as I said in my tweet, I've recorded this, this video three times over the past couple of weeks since it since the album came out which came uh, my album simulacrama came out on february 12th digitally everywhere definitely stream it if you can or buy it tomorrow is Bandcamp friday 
yeah, so I've tried to record it three times and I just, for some reason, was just not happy with the case. It's just like, yeah. Sometimes I can bang them out like no big deal and whatever. But for some reason, I just hated it and all three times. And I'm like, I, I, you know what? I can't force it. It's just not going to happen. It's fine. So we're going to go on and we're going to talk about it a little bit. So first of all, does anybody have, if anybody cares, if you don't, whatever, just listen. Does anybody have any questions about it at all? Before I start and talk about it, just in general, like how it came together and Sarge, you really ruining this. I want to talk a little bit about the, the, what, what was the impetus for the record? How I, I, I got through it because I feel like the interviews that I've done have kind of talked about it, but more so about like other like kitty stuff and whatever. So just as me as an artist, but I want to talk about this album specifically and, and the process and how it has differed from other ones. Because I think for anybody that is interested in, in production and, uh, and, you know, just songwriting process in general, I think it's kind of nice to hear because I'm always interested to hear how a song that I really liked, how it came together. Like, how did you even, how, where did you even start with that? And, I, and I'm always surprised to find out how simple it, it came to be. Like, just like, oh, well, you know, I did this and then it just became what it is. And every layer of building, every layer of that amazing cake came together in the, in the, in the perfect proportions and perfect way for it to be something that I really enjoy. So I, I think also one of the fourth, like the forward thoughts that I have in my head whenever I'm writing something is I'm as much as I am obviously writing it for my patrons, people that support me. Um, because um, originally when I was thinking about doing this, I was just like, you know what? I might just like, and, and you guys will remember this, I might just put out like a song here and there so that there isn't so much of a, a pressure for me to write an album uh, because that felt very daunting to me. But this chair, fuck. Um, it's, it, it ended up becoming something that as soon as I got into it, then I was like, okay, this is kind of turning into something uh, and I'm liking where it's going and I don't, want to interrupt that process. I'm just going to keep going uh, with it as much as possible. So I scrapped the idea of putting out things here and there and I said, okay, I'm going to make it into a record. And I think that was, when was that? Maybe uh, the summer of 2020? I think also a, a very large factor in why Simulacrum came together was because of COVID. I think that the time that I had to the, yeah, the un, basically uninterrupted time that I had to sit and write it, uh, sit and perfect it. And in some cases, scrap completely and write it from, from, from nothing, uh, happened quite a bit in fact. So for example, um, uh where is it truth bomb was something completely different it was going to be an instrumental song and then when i was i was playing around with it uh the original like f f files or whatever that i had ripped from logic pro in the mac my f infamous you know f fucking paperweight Although it still works, it's still perfectly functional. It doesn't connect to the internet anymore, though, so it's 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 basically a paperweight. Um, um, so everything that I took from there, I was like, I don't like this anymore, because that music to me represents something, a place that I was in in 2014 when I wrote it, or 2011 in some cases. Some of these songs are from 2011, as far back as 2011. So they were supposed to be. Um, because Human Conditional, I think I've told this before, Human Conditional was supposed to be an Amphibious Assault record, um, the, the pieces of an Amphibious Assault record, but then just never happened because I'm like, I don't know if I want to do that project anymore. Do I want to do this project anymore? And so then I kind of shelved it and then came, 
and then it became human conditional, which is a completely different thing. It was electronic rock, but it wasn't amphibious assault for sure. But um, a lot of the melodies on there are kernels of kind of on better days and sin eating amphibious assault era. So, yeah, and I was listening to, so for example, Truth Bomb is like that where I had to rewrite the entire thing because I was like, no, this is not what I wanted. This is not good. And I also had to get over the fact, and people that are musicians, yeah, I know, sweetie, you're going to be shitting a lot. You know that. Donald's food. For people that are musicians or producers as well, uh, getting over the guilt that you feel that you're, you weren't as productive as you would have liked on a song and also the the self-discipline that it takes to set a personal deadline for yourself because I was not I mean I was accountable to my patrons because I said to them this is the date that I would like to deliver it to you um but the accountability to yourself is is so difficult because you're just like I can change this date whenever I want but I have to convince myself that I cannot otherwise nothing is ever going to get done so that was also very something difficult to, to, to get over. So, yeah, and so it kind of, as I said, it came together um, once I was like, okay, you know what? Let's make this into a record. Let's make it into some something. Uh, and as I said, some of these songs were already written, or at least pieces of them were written in Logic Pro. And then I said, you know what? Obviously, I can't get Logic Pro again because it's a it's a Mac program. So I'm like, okay, well, what am I going to do now? I need to learn a new DAW, which was a huge anybody again who's musicians or producers. They know that like each DAW is different, and they have a certain philosophy behind them and the way that they're they're set up and and all this stuff. So it's it's a huge learning curve to sit there and not only am I writing a record, but I'm also learning a program at the same time. So I'm doing double duty. So I had to learn um, Ableton Live, which again has its own philosophy and how they kind of do things. And I was very used to the way Logic Pro is set up. Um, so that was also a thing, <laughs> trying to trying to learn like, okay, how do I do this? Like, how do I, how do I switch between views because they have an, uh, one view uh, which is arrangement view, which is what I'm more used to, very very similar to Logic Pro. But then you have another view, which is more geared, which is called session view, and that's geared towards like DJs and people that are doing like long sets and stuff, where they can preset everything and then change between them, uh, or add and subtract um, different parts. If they're doing like a live set, you can also do like there's a video component as well that's built into that. Uh, a video functionality that's built into it as well so you can you know live stream your music and and also video to go along with it i think that's how it's used um, again it's not really something that i <laughs> am interested in doing right now but so i was using a lot of the arrangement view but then even just figuring out how to to do it was like a huge learning curve for me but once i got it i'm like okay now i know how to do it then songs came quicker <laughs> which was nice. So, uh, sorry, I see that there are people typing in chat. I'm not ignoring you. I'm just trying to get through my train of thought. So once I did all of that and dumped it in there, for example, if I look at my Simulacrima like f folder, so the names, for example, what is this? Elephant Titus was a name of a, of a song. I don't know what song that is or what it turned into, to be perfectly honest. There's a song called Moo Land, which is a KLF reference. Uh, I wonder, can you guys hear this if I play what this is? I wonder. Tell me if you can. Oh, you can hear it over the mic, I guess. What is this? So this must be something I scrapped because I didn't end up using it. It's called the Mega Fat Synth. Ooh, I love that synth, actually. That's nice. This is an, a, a Logic software synth. And I also learned there, 
different synths in different DAWs, the pr the, like the pre-programmed pre software synths, um, all have their own particular signature and sound different. So you can tell, say, an Ableton synth versus a Logic synth. Apparently, that's something I learned that I was like, oh, that's it. That's fascinating. I love that. What is this? Soft pad. Oh. Oh, that sounds boring. Ooh, what's this? Like that. Ooh. Oh. Oh. It's very 80s. Love it. I don't know what song this is and what it was. So clearly there were ones where I decided the songs that were the most complete in terms of I can make a verse and a chorus and a verse and a bridge out of all of this so in some and stitching it all together in some way, those are the songs I went with. So for example, this Moo Moo Land song only had like a <laughs> those two things. So I'm like, that's not going to work. That's I need to get this done. So it's whatever oh there's a sad panda song what the fuck was sad panda okay look, look just humor me for a second i want to know what twangy synth means okay that's literally sounds like a fucking video game <laughs> what's this oh so this is from my mc307 so this is like uh external so not a software synth it's one of my favorite pads that it has on here it's it's like it's a rolling pad um and it's just oh it sounds so lovely and i use it to death on um on better days and sin eating like um love letters love letters addressed to dying i used it almost exclusively it was just i just loved the sound of it what's this Oh, this is, yeah, early, <laughs> early Amphibious Assault style. Also MC307. Or it could be my Korg, I'm not sure. I was really big into, like, arpeggiate, uh, arpeggiation. Like, these, like, very stabby kind of whatever. Anyway, so my point is, is that there were a lot of these songs that I didn't even end up doing anything with because I just didn't have time. So let me go to a question quickly because I don't want it to get too much. So uh, uh, Mitch asks, are you ever going to do any remixes uh, of other people's stuff or of my own? I would love to. I've never done it before. That would be an interesting skill to learn, I think. Acro says, I had a question about an effect in a song because Biosphere used it on a record in 91, but I forgot which song it's on. Maybe just what electronics and synth that it, synths you used. Okay, so most of them, as I said, they're from either um, from my MC through a seven um, or they were synth packs that I bought that I kind of rebuilt and t tweaked to kind of sound the way I, I liked. Um, and they were all, well, mm, yeah, they were pretty much all Ableton packs. There are so many, as you guys know, there are so many different plugins that you can get for a DAW now, uh, or any number of DAWs, or digital audio workstations, that it's just, it's mind blowing and there's just too much. So I wanted to try and keep it simple, stupid, and use uh, the, lo the logic ones and I would just bounce them as an audio file and then literally sit there and edit it in, in Audacity. Because one of the things I don't like about Ableton is it doesn't have an audio editor. So you have to do it in a different program and then export it back into the, into the program. So that was like, ugh. um, I mean, not that I know of anyways, I'm still very new at Ableton, although I very much like it now, but there are pros and cons. You know, some people like swear about, swear up and down about 
you know, Cubase or they'll use Pro Tools, but I quite like, I quite like my, uh, my Ableton now, but anyway. So yeah, those are really the only, there are like a couple of, of um, Synthwave packs that I used, a uh, lot of presets, but they were, some of the time I would just take them down to zero and then kind of build it to something that I like. There were a couple uh, of um, uh, software modulators, like 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 voltage modular. That was one thing that I think Mark shared that I finally got to work, and I was like, "Oh shit, this is great!" Because you can, it is it's like endless the kinds of things that you can do there in terms of tweaking um, it, tweaking the waveforms. So, or t tweaking the yeah, no babes. No, no, no. So that, uh, it, it, it almost does your head in, really, because you're just like, oh my god, there's so many different types. But um, So in terms of electronics, almost exclusively software-based, but I do have some that I've used from my MC307, and yeah, that's it. As you guys know, I don't have a lot of space for hardware um, sense, like external sense fuck if i if i had the money oh jesus who needs to eat <laughs> just buy more synths <laughs> acro says was detroit become human and inspiration for the concept good question uh i would say some truths there's some truth to that for sure because i was really like and i have always been very interested in the intersection between uh human and artificial intelligent beings. I think that's, it's very, I mean, it's nothing new. I'm sure, you know, there were tons of movies about this kind of thing, but I just think it's very interesting. And it, there was a, I'm, I'm not really a writer, really, but I wrote a short story years and years and years ago uh, about a, again, it's nothing it's nothing original really it's not an original idea I mean maybe it is I don't know but it was about a, a, a an android girl um, who lives in a very much like a city like you see on my background here very cyberpunk style place and I wrote it I wrote it in like 2002 so I've had this song this idea for a very very long time anyway so it's a, about this android girl and she's Part of like kind of an underground group of of like w w assassins really they're assassins but they also work in the uh, in a brothel they work as sex workers so she's does this work by day but she also gathers intelligence and she hears and 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 sees a lot of things that she can use for her boss um who can you know make people disappear essentially so City Lights Are Here is actually based on this story about her and her experience in this city and how she, oh, and so she's also, yeah, she's an android, so she's not, she's not a human. So she's experiencing all these things and she ends up kind of falling in love and it's like a, like a whole thing and it turns bad, of course. So, so to answer your question, yes, but it's also kind of based on some ideas that I had had previously to Detroit being come part being coming part of my life because i think it's a fantastic game and but the idea of of the interaction and in you know the continued intermingling between humans and and androids um yeah i think is fascinating i i for one accept our android overlords he's cleaning himself now Okay, Mitch says, which song did you do the most versions of? I remember you saying you had redone one a bunch of times. Why? Good question. So I think if you recall from, uh, as you're a patron, you have seen some of my posts uh, on, yeah, you, you're alluding to the fact that one was redone a bunch of times. That was gridlocked heart it was one of the ones that i read scrapped redid scrapped redid so many times i can't even tell you i wish i could 
Does it actually show me how many times I redid it? Back up. Okay, so I started working on it in in May, May 10th, around in and around May 10th of last year. Then I reworked it again in June, June 11th, re redid it re uh, June 22nd, redid it July 28th, so I sat on it for a while. <laughs> then I redid it the beginning of August, redid it the, three times in August, then went back to it in October four times and then committed to it at that point. So even up until the day, <laughs> the day before I went in to record it, I was changing things. So that was like a, a big, not learn, um, a big step for me to just be like, just, just fucking stop, stop tweaking, just leave it. It's fine. It's everything will be fine. So, and in terms of why I did that, uh, it perfectionism, it's just like, I need it to be perfect. And even still, when I listen to it, there are so many things I still want to change about it. And I'm sure the musicians in the, uh, in the chat can, can attest to that. But you know, you look at it, you're like, fuck, why did I do that? Why couldn't I just change it here? Whatever. But it's done. It's done. It's out there. And I'm proud of it. Even in, even if it's in a form that I find to be imperfect, it's fine. It is, it's, it's what it is. It's fine. so that's yeah that's my my answer to that so john asks was by any other name inspired by anything in particular a certain artist band movie or game uh you you mean in terms of lyrically or musically i'm assuming you mean musically um so by any other name is interesting because the only thing that i had written in my Mac, I'm pointing down here because the Mac is on the floor. <laughs> it's, it's right here. <laughs> that and so the only thing I had written at that time, which I can probably tell you when I wrote it. Um, when would have the oh, oh right? It's not called by any other name. Oh yeah, it is. Here it is. Oh God, I had a scratch vocal for this. Yeesh, do we want to hear that? I don't think I want to. <laughs> that would have been recorded in 2013, it says. So, <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Ah! Was it this? Uh, yeah, I, I scrapped that part. That I, I didn't want to use anymore. Yeah, it was just this. That's all I had. It's like, what the fuck am I gonna do with this? Uh, okay. So I was like, okay. And I don't know in terms of in inspiration what I was thinking in 2013, but what was I doing in 2013? I don't even know. Oh, I was in school. Or I was going into school. No, I wasn't in school. I was, I was, yeah, I was like desperately unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe just being unemployed <laughs> made me think of this but um somebody uh, told me afterwards that it, do it it reminds them of a video game that doo -doo 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 -doo. they're like oh it sounds like a video game i'm like which video game but it, it's like a popular one like legend not the legend of zelda but something like that something like an old video game i'm like oh <laughs> well never claimed i was super original i don't know Music to me is something that exists in this very vast space that I feel some people are very tapped into and I, I can hear these things in my head. I don't know. Maybe the voices are talking to me. Who knows? But uh, to answer your question, John, uh, I don't have any particular thought of where it came from, but I know that it started with that and that's all I had to work with and I built it from there. Um... And yeah, Kels, something about in inspiration just hits you. It just does. When it does, it does. And um, yeah, Mitch, you know what I'm talking about. Moo Moo Land. 
I love KLF. I think they're great. Um, hey, Christopher. What's up, Chris? So, okay, do we want to hear the scratch vocal idea? I'm scared. <laughs> oh, I'm scared. <laughs> what if it's, if it's really bad? I'm so sorry. Oh, no. Do I want to do this? Wait, what scratch vocal idea? What is this? I'm scared. <laughs> okay, if it's bad, I'm just going to turn it off. It's fine. What do you see yourself? Uh, okay, no. <laughs> All right. Yeah, because my the melody that I had come up with it originally when I wrote the song in 2013 was like uh, uh, over this. Where is it? The mini saw lead verse. So it was this. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da -da. So it's very like not like it is now. Da -da 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 and then it turned into what we know, which is completely not this. So I actually ended up scrapping that entire three doo doo part. I was like, I fucking hate it. It's terrible. So I just got rid of it. I got rid of the scratch vocal idea that you just heard. Unfortunately, I'm so sorry you had to hear that, but I got rid of that completely. I'm like, no, I need to write it as if I'm Fallon in 2020 because Fallon in 2013 was a totally another bitch. This is me now, so. I'm gonna make it sexier. I think that was one thing I wanted to do instead of kind of like airy, light and airy, I wanted it to be sexier. Um, so I should also say that By Any Other Name is about the same person who uh, criticized the, the Chalice of Truth. It's, just, it's about him. Um, so fuck that guy. <laughs> If you're listening, fuck you. <laughs> John, I need you to... I'm going to give you his number so you can call him and tell him that he's a fucking asshole. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, uh, Chab says, we could use a B-Sides. We could. Yeah, I agree. There are... Like I said, uh, for patrons, there is a 10th song that um, is pretty much... Well, it's not done. I, again... I'm really trying hard not to do this, but half of it I didn't like anymore, so I deleted it, and I started again. Um, I was going to say, I'm going to play for you, but I'm not going to do that. Maybe I'll play, I'll put it on, I'll put it on Patreon, so you can hear, like, what, where it's going. Um, originally, it was something completely different, and then it just turned into, oh! Okay. I was gonna go through all the songs systematically, but it just seems that it's not gonna happen. Sad Panda is a South Park reference, right? No, I don't watch South Park. I got it somewhere else. John says, now I'm scouring eBay for an MC307. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Mitch says, of yours KMF Dam style. Oh, that would be interesting. I am, um, I have a longer version of Three Storms uh it's seven minutes long and it's like a like a full kind of house kind of you know build 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 and then it gets a little quieter and then it goes like full out um like real yeah like a real house song <laughs> like uk garage house um but or i don't know it's kind of like a techno-y kind of thing a techno mix so it's, it's i guess that that's that counts right i have a, an alternate version of the same song Oh. Um, John said, uh, Metzger says, I'm stealing your story. Go ahead. I will sue your ass. <laughs> um, John says, both lyrically and musically, I got, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot your, oh, okay. I think I answered your question already. Trap says, were you listening to other bands when writing and recording to help facilitate the whole process? Uh, in terms of like sound, I gave, if you're asking about production wise, um, so I really wanted, uh, obviously, and I'm sure that came through to people that have listened to it. It's a very 
uh, retro sound, very warm. Um, and I wanted it to be vocally driven, which I think I accomplished, uh, which was also um, challenging because as you guys know, I've had like some breathing issues and throat issues and all kinds of shit. And so it was very nerve wracking to see if I could actually uh, perform what I had in my head. Cause I'm like, I, I feel like I, I want to do something like with Truth Bomb, that's something that I did not expect that I could do with my voice, but I was able to do it. I'm like, I want it, I want to do this. I have it in my head, I'm gonna try it. And I, I was saying, like Mariana, who did the recording for me, um, I told her like, okay, I know we just did something <laughs> two, like a week, or was it two weeks ago, where I literally screamed my face off on Electropunk, but I, I like, I'm going to be doing something completely different. So I'm, I was telling her this only because of like settings and stuff, because I didn't want to blow out the mic specifically for when I was doing electropunk versus something where truth bomb is going to be very up close. And I, I wanted it, to, I wanted it to capture all of the, the range that my voice could do. So yeah. So I was listening to a lot of like, early v and v Nation, um, and if we're talking about musically, early v and v Nation, early Front for, uh, front 242, um, Nitzer Ebb, for example, that was also like a big thing. But then I was also listening to like, I, I wanted to capture the, the, the um, sort of rawness, I guess, of like uh, bands like Sisters of Mercy or something where it's kind of like, it, it doesn't sound polished necessarily, but it sounds still, I don't know, retro. And I wanted that kind of sound too. So when we were deciding on what to do in terms of when I sent like this big, long fucking email, I'm like, okay, in terms of overall sound. And like, once we get to the mastering, I gave her um, a different example. So VNV Nation's Noir was one of them because I wanted that kind of darkness literally means black <laughs> which is pretty on the nose so something like that and um yeah so and also listening to depeche mode obviously i think that comes through pretty pretty clearly that i'm a huge depeche mode fan um but i wanted specifically i wanted from ultra that record because i'm like i love the way that it sounds um overall and I was, I gave that as an example, like ultra for sure. And then in terms of the way that I wanted the uh, vocals to sound, I wanted it to sound super up close, super warm and, and silky. That was important to me that those, all of those elements came through. So I think that answers your question. I, I, I don't know. But in terms of having to facilitate, facilitate the process, I've been saying this for a while, but I've been listening to a ton of, aside from the bands that I mentioned earlier, listening to a ton of punk too. So punk really like, like kind of old school stuff. I don't know, like the damned. I listened to a lot of the damned for some reason. It's like such a weird thing to mix in with like the Depeche Mode and all these other kind of post, you know, new wave, 80s new wave kind of thing. Uh, yeah. So yeah, the punk mixed with, I don't know, I'm always listening to the Misfits, so that doesn't really count, but like specifically new stuff, I was listening to a lot of The Damned, which is interesting. So obviously that came through on Electropunk, so. Um, John says, uh, my fa uh, blah, 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 blah. I fucking love that self line, synth line, thank you so much. That means a lot. Um, Akko says, I curse the name of whoever ripped on the child. Right? Who fucking, who rips on the chalice of truth? Like, I, and I already knew at that point um, that he was an idiot. Like, just a garbage human. Kick him into the garbage. Set it on fire. Bye-bye. Sorry, I just scared the cat. Are you cool? How long have we been talking for? Two hours. Holy shit. Uh, I'll get through all these questions and I'll continue my train of thought sad panda is from south park but people just use it whenever they're sad now yeah exactly that's i think that's where i got it from Akra says is truth bomb the one where you really 
when you hit a really high note. I was going to ask if you dread doing that one live when you eventually tour. You went way up there. Um, I think that is Simulacrum, actually. Are you talking about like the operatic ending? You guys know that I have been wanting to take opera lessons for a long time to try and build um, my my upper register because I'm not strong there. As you know, my naturally my voice is quite low or in the lower register rather. And I think also because of the puffer and all the other bullshit, it's changed my voice completely. And I think also in, in a good way. So it's not, it's not a bad thing. It's just kind of opened a different door for me. Um, but in terms of worrying about doing that live, you'll be surprised to know this. And I, I remember I was telling Tanya this and she's like, really? What the fuck is wrong with you? I'm like, I know, <laughs> I'm terrible. Um, I never warm up ever when I'm singing ever. Like it's, it's, it's absolutely the worst thing that you can do for your voice. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> and even when I, like I was touring with Kitty too, like I never warmed up and even something that, you know, when you're, when you're growling, when you're doing like a sound that that can like destroy your voice if you don't know what you're doing. So, um, I was always really impressed with with uh, Morgan because Morgan never lost her voice ever. Like it, like she could do that over and over and over again. But that was because she took lessons, like how to do that properly without killing your voice. And she warmed up. But I felt I don't need to warm up. I only sing one fucking song and two songs, and I don't need to. But I noticed that the control that I have um, vocally is is absolutely zero. If I don't like, it's like a you know, when you're, when you're stretching before you're going to exercise, it's fucking exercise and your body needs it. And I'm like, why don't I do this? So this is the first album where every time I recorded a vocal, I had like a vocal session, I would spend a good like 10, 15, 20 minutes warming up, doing scales, doing whatever. And I did especially for, for Simulacrum because I knew that I needed to go like, oh, like really, really high. I, I needed to be able to stretch those I need to pump myself up. No more food, honey bunny. You ate. I, there's literally no more food. You ate it all. So, I know that's terrible. That's not a good thing. It's not, you know, but uh, you live, you learn, I guess, right? Um, and even, even, guys, even guitar, I never warmed up, ever. And I found, now that I have arthritis, I have to. Otherwise, my hands will seize and I can't play. So I do scales, I, I like, you know, um, especially here, because sometimes I, and it happened actually when I played, um, when was that? When I played with Kitty in 2017, um, when we were, when we were like doing soundcheck or whatever, my hand seized when I was trying to play because we were doing, what was it? Um, it was during Charlotte or something. My hand seized and I couldn't, I was like, oh my God, I can't go. Oh. So I just stopped playing. And Morgan's like, is there everything cool? I'm like, oh, yeah, everything's fine. But shame on me. Uh, I didn't warm up. So it was like, you know, trying to run a fucking marathon with, with the, you know, not being warm before doing that. So I've been very regimented about doing that. So that has just kind of, I don't know, I wouldn't say up my game, but taking it more seriously. So, yeah, Chris says, you absolutely killed every track despite your breathing and throat issues. Super impressive. Thank you so much, Chris. That means, that means a lot. Because it was, I I'm, honestly was very afraid that I was like, I'm never going to be able to sing again. And I told my doctor that. I'm like, I'm a, I'm a singer. Like, I need to, you know, I need to. S so I just have to kind of figure out a way to do that better. Uh, Akra says, you hit a very high note that impressed me. Usually you're in that Atlantis range. Yeah, it's, uh, once I warmed up enough, it was easy. Uh, well, easy. I don't know if it was easy, but yeah, I was able to do it. Yeah, and uh, to, I did not, I did not warm up. It's not good. It, I highly, 100% do not recommend. Uh, and I did that also when I was like in Grace Dynasty, 
Um, and there would just be days where like, oh my God, I couldn't even hear my own voice. It was so bad. Like I wasn't warmed up. I, you know, you have to be properly warmed up on top of nerves, you know, when your nerves come through and, you know, and it was also the pressure of kind of like leading a band was a lot. I mean, now with Amphibious Assault, I'm not going to have a choice because it's just going to literally be me and another person perhaps when I tour. So I'm going to have to get over that. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> nice Hans and Franz rep. <laughs> Glad you got that. Uh, John says, oh, fuck, at least it never happened during a show itself. I never warm up when I play bass or a guitar, though, so never had an issue with it. And I, I think, it, it, neither, did, neither did I, really. So it just became something I have to do now to make sure that I'm able to properly perform because it's, you know, I'm getting, I'm old. <laughs> yeah, baby, I n no food, okay? You, you, whatever. Anyway, uh, now it's, uh, it's, I, I would be dumb not to do that. Okay, what is this? Let's close this. Um, bum bum. What was I also going to say? Right, so interesting. So, yeah, so I already talked about the fact that uh, Gridlocked was, it, I guess, technically. Gridlocked is, is, oh no, I never talked about that one. Mm, do I want to talk about that? <laughs> In and around the same time as uh, Chow is the Truth Guy. It's about somebody else who's, oh my God, a genuine hate for this person, but um, whatever. It's about, it's about this person, so whatever. It's about a person, we'll just say that. And you can read into it as much as you want, and it's not that deep. Um, <laughs> so Electropunk, I think, is also pretty straightforward. Um, that... Ooh, I wonder if I have the original of that. I think I, I played it into my... Stop! No! Babes, no more food. I literally don't have any more food. You're, you're, you're shit out of luck, bud. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Oh, what's this? Oh, right. So for Electropunk, I actually wrote the drums, which I don't usually do. Um, and I actually played the drums on the... It's a mixture between me and Mariana playing the drums on Electropunk on the final version. But this is a... This is what I wrote, like, in fucking GarageBand. It's like, I want something like this. It's really terrible. It's not in time. But anyway... <laughs> Don't judge me. What's this? Oh. Oh, what happened there? So I had that. And then I had the drum thing. Ooh, I had this. Which is what you hear. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. Okay. So this. Uh, the, this is called the Dominator synth. It's a great synth on uh, on Logic. Um, I, I for some reason couldn't get the timing right in Ableton. Once I imported it into Ableton, I couldn't get it right. So this is the original. That's what it was supposed to sound like. So I had to find a comparable synth in Ableton and then re-record it and just, and it turned into, well, Electropunk. I don't want to call, do I need to DMCA myself if I play it? Oh, whatever, what the fuck it? Okay, let's, so it turned into this. So the little whoop whoop is gone versus what I just played. So it changed. Um, and that happened a lot where the timing between the two programs is completely off and there's no way that I can get it back in time unless I recreate it in Audacity and then import it back into the DAW, if that makes sense. And I, I was like, I don't have fucking time to do this. It's going to take forever. So I'm just going to re-record the fucking thing and then do it, build the thing from scratch. 
Um, oh, I even gu did guitars too. Oh, this is not, this is not sound terrible because I did this on my phone. Because I wanted it to sound like old kind of punk style. For, for my phone, that's pretty good, right? Oh my god, no, nobody needs to hear that. Uh, what is freeze cranberry punch? What is that? Oh. Freeze cranberry punch. Oh, that must have been the original bass that I played on top of this. So that's how that came together. Um, and I mean, I think electropunk in terms of lyrically is pretty easy to understand what it's about. It's like you know, I wrote the lyrics like pretty much right when um, Cyberpunk was supposed to come out. Please don't do that. Oh my God, he's back to his normal antics. So it's basically about that, um, about implants and not in, not implants, but like implants. Um, yeah, so. That's what that's about. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, we talked about Truth Bomb, which is really something that I rewrote completely from scratch in like a couple of a week, a week or something like that. Um, it was supposed to sound completely different. What was Truth Bomb supposed to sound like? I'm curious. Uh, I don't think. Hold on, guys, one second. Oh, is this it? Dawn of Man. <gasps> yes! Okay, so this is what Truth Bomb was supposed to be. It was supposed to be like a, a instrumental song. And I just had this from my MC307 that I put into my logic years and years and years ago. This is all I had. So I was like, okay, I can try and turn this into something. And it never turned into anything. And I just rewrote the song from scratch. What is this? Oh, okay, whatever. Um, yeah, so that was supposed to be what Troop Bomb sound like, and it didn't turn into anything that is resembling what I just played you. So, Simulacrima, I think I also wrote completely from scratch. Before I say that... Sorry, guys. I need to. Oh. All oh, right. So, Simulacrima, yeah, I did completely from scratch because originally, ooh, something called the J Bob Pad. Why does it sound so quiet? The fuck? What's lucky? Oh yeah, no. I'm so glad I rewrote it. <laughs> it was so bad. It was a, an early... Okay, that's still in there. I think I rewrote it though. It's not this... Um... It's not this uh, sample, but it, I redid the sample... Sorry, I redid the notes with a different synth. I think. Or something very similar. Uh, yeah. Ooh, what's the analog? Oh yeah, there's that arpeggiation again. I just was obsessed with arpeggiation. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> let's do something like like this. Oh no, is this another scratch vocal? Do we want to? Hear it? Okay, I'm gonna turn it off. It's really bad. What the fuck? No, I don't know what that is. Okay, not a scratch vocal. Woo. Oh, but I do have a scratch vocal for that I'll play you. Don't come for me. It's something originally with. Wait, what? Originally with grid, uh, gridlocked. I had a scratch vocal. Tracks to Mariana. Did I give it to her? Okay. Oh, and maybe I didn't. 
crunchy bass first. Yeah, so the, this was also something that I wrote in Logic that I had to try and reclock, and it was, oh my god. That was partially one of the reasons why I wrote it, like rewrote it like 10 times, because I couldn't get the timing right. I wonder if I could just open live and show you. You can hear it. Anyways, I don't, I'm sorry, I'm not even paying attention to you guys anymore. <laughs> just talking to myself. Um, Akko says, have you thought at all about what good song will be a single video? Good luck seems it's more obvious since it's the other ones would be cool. Yeah, so I'll be doing some kind of update about that soon, about what's going to happen there. I have three that I would like to do. But because I'm already starting to think about writing the, the, the follow-up to Simulacrum in like June, spoiler alert, It when he goes quiet because I don't know where he is. Um, I'm thinking of maybe even combining all of them in some way and then just doing like kind of, I, and I talked about this before, I think this kind of short filmy something or other. Anyway, Synergy says, Sarge reminds me of my female cat. She will eat her canned food and then she will literally try to eat my male male cat's canned food if he leaves any behind. She constantly wants more. Like, yeah, I, I, I feel like there's something in his brain then when he's, once he's had some drug alteration, he, he gets, his appetite just goes mad. It's insane. John says, how is your voice after you recorded Electropunk? So John, this is, this is where the, um, the warming up came in like, oh my God. So I had not only tea or actually it was warm water, warm water lemon uh w warm water and honey at the ready shit tons of water and i warmed up my voice for a good 15 20 minutes i mean that was pretty standard but i think i i really made sure that i was you know all registers were good and that i felt warmed up and, and ready but even just doing um i think i i think i might have done that song in one take one or two takes maybe two takes and usually what I do when I do vocals is I, I do section by section. Um, and I know that um, stamina wise, I have to practice and work up to being able to sing the whole song, sing all of these songs, because these are very, very vocally demanding songs, as you guys know. Um, I'm going to have to work towards doing that. And just like any muscle, right? I have to work towards getting through 30 minutes of singing like, like that. Likely Electropunk will be one of the last songs in the set because it's going to be very vocally demanding. And I, any, like I wouldn't do Truth Bomb and, um, uh, and Electropunk actually back to back in a set. I'd probably make them as far apart as possible. So yeah, I, that's how it was really was recorded. It was just, and it was funny because we had set up, it was a Sennheiser and a, and a Newman or Neumann, uh, the way that she set it up was really interesting. It's a, like the, the mic there was, a, was usually is a drum mic almost, I think, from what I understand. The other one is strictly a vocal mic, but she does a dual mic setup. So one of them is very, uh, quite warm. And the other one is just like an industry standard, like holy grail um, vocal mic. So the way she had it set up was like right in front of me like this, but for Electropunk, for whatever reason, I screamed it this way. So it has this really, because I wanted it to sound really, really kind of big as much as I could. But then even, even though I knew that it was going to be distorted to shit, I, I wanted it to, I didn't want to scream directly in. I kind of screamed this way. Um, I don't know why I did that. I think it just was natural. I didn't want to blow out the mic, first of all, because she was just like, you know what? I don't even need, to. she comes up, she's like, I don't even need to mic you because you're fucking loud. And I'm like, hello, I'm oh, sorry. Oh my God. Sarge. Babes, you can't do that. You're on drugs. Uh, Met says, Devin Townsend got DMCA'd for playing himself on Twitch. <laughs> yeah. Um, Nate said, this would make such a good podcast if you take the audio from this. Oh, okay, good. Well, then that, that'll be the first one. <laughs> Episode one. <laughs> or whatever. I don't know. Um, 
Acker says, I have 8,000 random snippets of ideas like this in GarageBand. And similarly, they're all named weird things and I have no idea what they are. Yeah. And you, and eventually you just have to get systematic about it if you want to turn it into something, right? Which is essentially what I did. Um, Mitch says, you could do a video for Three Storms with cyberpunk in-game footage. That would be cool until you get letter you get, get a letter from the lawyers. <laughs> yeah, good, good point. Synergy says, oh, Zard, yeah, he's okay. He's just a little dumb. That's all. Don says, odd question. Do you know if you use any amps for the guitars on the record? If you use any amps for the guitars? What do you mean? Or was it straight into the desk and reamped? Oh, uh, it was both. So we did a clean, clean run that sh she ran through an amp designer, I'm pretty sure. Um, but the... Um, Yeah, it was just like a Fender Twin, I think, or something like the jazz. Oh, what the fuck was it? I wrote it down somewhere. I'm not super picky about that kind of thing, generally. I was like, okay, well... Well, no, that's not true. Originally, she was like, we could just do it as a DI, and then I can, you know, we can amp design it or whatever if you want. And I'm like, no, I don't... I want to hear it. I want to hear, you know, how great it sounds in the room i don't yeah i don't want to just play like fucking you know just the clean it just sounds terrible so she's like i have a, a like a pedal that we can use if you want i'm like okay because she's like generally people don't come in here and they want it like a fucking mesa boogie or whatever that's it's not this the recording studio that i was using was more of geared towards uh hip, mostly hip-hop artists and stuff working in this in this space but there was a drum set and there was, um, you know, everything that you need to actually have like a rock band, but generally people don't. Yeah. Like the, the, the amp was just a, a, like a clean fender fucking, yeah, not anything with distortion. The distortion was terrible. So I was like, this makes me sad. <laughs> so I actually <laughs> brought my like shitty fucking, t um, 15 watt, line six which has amazing built-in distortion which i didn't expect but um you can combine different kinds like metal and crunch and stuff and so i'm like i want it to sound like this like you know if i had my mesa i would have used my mesa but it's it, the thing's a fucking beast and it's still you know in my parents house what are you doing you're turning into look at him he's turning into butter boop boop uh anyways so, yeah, so it was, to answer your question, it was a mix of both. Woo! Sorry. Oh, my God. I just got lost. Fuck. Sorry. <laughs> Morris says, hour two of the 24-hour stream. No, definitely not going to be 24 hours, for sure. I see so many just chatting streams with music. I just watched Big Brother Canada stream off global TV. Really? Weird. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was the Twin Reverb. Thank you. Yeah, and it was a Line 6 Spider. Exactly they're so great like I it's the only thing I do use obviously with headphones um because I don't have my Mesa here and hey Ryan Hazel what's up um so like I mean I'll just sit and play I was playing um painkiller when was that last week because I was just like list listening to any like old Judas Priest just gets me into like I need to play this because it just sounds so fucking awesome it's great um, I'm wondering if I, just humor me for a second, guys, if I have the scratch vocal that's still here. Oh, I do. Oh, no, I'm so sorry that you have to hear it. Can we solo it so you can hear it? Oh. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if I can... Now the cat is on me and I can't move. Damn it. Um, hey, Opie, welcome. Thank you, uh, Ryan, for the compliment and li for listening to Simulacrama. Aw, that's so amazing you cried. <laughs> well, I hope that you come out to a show and you can cry in person, too. We can cry together. It'd be therapeutic. Look at him, guys. He's so comfy. Are you comfy, my love? Huh? Uh, I can't even show it to you guys because 
<laughs> okay, maybe I can just change the out output for a second, um, and it will preferences audio output device. Can we do that? Is that gonna work? Oh. Oh God, it's so it's so bad. I wonder if I can not solo it. You can hear. Let's see. Wow, that kick is so fucking awesome. Which kick is this? The 909. Can we solo that. Listen to that. It's fucking punishing. So good. I'm so glad I discovered you. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's literally like I want to stomp on your brains. <laughs> so the, this was what I originally had for the, and please, it's really pitchy and terrible. I recorded it with this fucking mic, and it's, it's just fucking shit. But anyway. I had what did I have on here? I had like um it's it's not uh melodyned or auto tuned or anything, it's just it has a like a phaser on it, I think. Oh, there's a phaser called Discord. What does that do? Wait, do I have audio? Oh fuck. Oh, yeah. What does Discord do? Can we is turning into like an Ableton Ableton session. No, 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 play this part. Oh, that sounds weird. Okay, let's make the attack like really high. I think when I originally did that, it was more so that I wanted the melody to sound like that with actual words. So, da 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 da, da which actually turned into what I played for the guitar, if you remember, which I don't have the guitars in here, obviously. This is for when I wrote the song originally. What are we doing now? It's almost three hours. I've been fucking screaming in your faces. Um, <laughs> sorry, guys. And then, Okay, where were we? Okay, we talked about by any other name. Um, someone mentioned Eternal Sadness. Why is Eternal Sadness impossibly superb? Oh, I don't know about that, but thank you. I appreciate it. Eternal Sadness was originally called something. What the fuck is Dick Cheese? Oh, that's a nice little sound. Dick Cheese. Good sound. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. It's called unresolved dick cheese. <laughs> because you can't have resolved dick cheese. It's only unresolved. It's just always there. You know what I mean? Um, what the fuck was uh, Eternal Sadness called before? Was it this one? What's this? No, 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 no. Sorry. This turned into something else. Uh. Give me a sec, guys. So, Eternal Sadness was originally... Oh, yeah. Originally... Oh my god, it sounded totally different. There was this. This is an MC307 um, stack synth called the DOC stack synth. I use it a shit ton on um, on Better Days and Sin Eating and on District 6 I use it quite a bit. Um, and I think that was partially one of the reasons why I wanted to like gravitate awards from the MC307 because I used it so much on those two records. So I didn't want it to sound the same. I wanted to, to sound different and new and you know um so i don't know how to answer your question ryan but <laughs> um 
uh, sorry, I just missed your question completely. Where is it there? Oh yeah. So I, yeah. That one I think also was, was, uh, completely rewritten from what I had originally thought for it. And then it became what it is now. Uh, yeah. Sarge has become your Wilson, the volleyball during COVID. <laughs> Yeah, basically, right? Oh, I'm oh, I'm so sorry. I ended up using the DOC stacks in, but very low in the mix, obviously. Fuck, that sounds so much more industrial than it does on the. Oh, actually, no, it sounds pretty. That's dirty and that's that's the same uh oh this kit is called the abuse kit and i used it quite a bit on this record because <laughs> it sounds so uh, it sounds like you're listen to this it sounds so fucking listen to that oh, oh my kick is just sounds like a fucking muddy mess it's wonderful that's two snares layered on top of each other with added gain. That's how I got that. Like, it's a, and it's actually offset. So it's like when it sounds like um, the snare is being triggered, it, it's like a, 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 what do you call that? A scatter or a skitter? I think it's like a tsh, tsh, which I was like, woo, I like that. Let's do it. Cause it was kind of a, like a happy accident a little bit, which I was, I kept it in. But uh, yeah, this, this, oh, this kick. No, where's that snare? Where is it? Oh, it just sounds so, so freaking amazing. Um, I wish, I, oh, I can show you the waveform for it. It's for, um, for this one. No, show me the waveform for this. Okay, for all you real, real nerdy production people. Yeah, there's like a, a, a skip here. So it's like... Tsh, tsh, tsh. It's, it's, it's fucking great. It's great. I love it. Uh, you can't really see it very well, but there's a dip here in the... Actually, no, yeah, you can. Hold on. <gasps> oh, yeah. Power of making the waveform a little bit bigger but yeah you can see there's like a dip there it just shows the skitter of the snare it's fucking brilliant i love it love it love it love it kudos to whoever created that sound because i used it a lot <laughs> it's great uh let's just listen to it again because it's just so glorious not the song i'm saying the sound itself Oh my god, I could listen to that all day. Just oh, so good. Um yeah, so that's that's eternal sadness. I'm glad you enjoy it, Ryan. Thank you so much. Where I got lost. Oh yeah, you can see the, the lyrics here I've got. Um This is cool, it's like screen sharing. Oh my god. Oh, it's like we're in like a Zoom call together, guys. Um, in terms of what, uh, internal sadness is about, pretty straightforward relationship bullshit, I think, right? Uh, City Lights Are Here, I already talked about, um, what it's about, a, um, short story that I wrote. Tommy D is going to figure prominently in, uh, whatever videos I would like to do City Lights as a video. Tommy D is going to be a recurring character, I decided. Um, Tommy D is the person that I was talking about. He's the, like, underground dude he's also an android as well but he runs he kind of runs the criminal underworld in the android world yeah and so he she works for tommy um 
Oh, did I? I didn't caps lock that. Damn. Lifeline has a very interesting pedigree as well. Sorry, if this is like super boring, let me know. <laughs> but I think it's funny. Okay. Let's go back to chatty. Um, I think it's fun. Anyways, that this Lifeline was originally a song that I had thought I was going to sell to somebody else um, as a, like a pop song. And because I called it the Katy Perry song, you guys probably for the patrons that were part of the um, okay, good, he's sleeping. Um, part of the uh, the process of, of putting this song together. Um, it was yeah, it was called the Katy Perry song. And I think I can give you an idea. Can I? Can I give you an idea of what it sounded like before? Oh, because originally it was also going to not have any words. Um, yeah, it was going to be an instrumental song. And then I decided that I would write Three Storms, um, which also I'll talk about in a second, um, which also was was some like a sample that I had done 50,000 years ago that I was like, okay, I can probably do something with this. And then I just kind of, anyway. Oh, yes, it was called Summer is Fun originally. <laughs> the Katy Perry, AKA Katy Perry song. Um, I did keep the bells in originally, um, but the, the entire song had like a bell track, a synth bell. And I was like, okay, I can just keep it like this. I guess just keep it and um I don't know so this was like why are you why are you being like this this is a, a logic uh, logic synth it's called the Mayday Generation Mayday Generation is the name of the synth uh, but again I couldn't get the um, timing correct between the two DAWs, so I had to rewrite it in Ableton. So I got something that sounded almost virtually, like pretty much exactly the same. I kept the bells in, I think. Chris, this is for you if you're still here. <laughs> Chris likes this song. <laughs> he told me, he's like, I like that song. I'm like, thanks guy. Uh, so yeah, I think I kept the bells in, but, uh, this was the bell that I had. What? I, I felt like it sounded like a jingle, like in a commercial or something that it could be used for, for that. Um, yeah, I was going to sell it to Katy Perry and see what she thought. Oh, and then for what it's actually about, um, I think pretty straightforward relationship bullshit <laughs> and then um so for three storms i will tell you that originally again it was going to be something else and i want to see if i can was it this one no three storms started out with another group of sounds that i had imported either from Logic or from the MC-307, I can't remember exactly. But uh, it became, I that I just rewrote the whole thing and from completely from scratch because it just wasn't, I don't know, wasn't really hitting me like I wanted it to. Oh, is it this? Yes. Oh my God, it was so bad. This is from MC, my MC-307, very, very like Roland type sound. It's like this like kind of spacey morse code thing oh what oh that's a dirty fucking kick man oof can you guys hear that Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Three Storms is originally going to be like a straight up, really old school kind of industrial sounding song with like a lot of hitting uh, metal things and whatever. So this is this. This is actually called an industrial snare hit. And it's like this. 
and I was gonna put like a ton of reverb on it so it would be like a like very you know put some flower on it and hit it and then it's just like you know very dramatic and then there was some tom hits too yeah oh it's so it's so lumps good it's great but I had to I had to bounce them all separately so it sounds weird of course because when you put it all together it sounds relatively normal but um, in this case oh was this the original oh yeah this is called the detuned pad and um, I use this on post-apocalyptic burn if you remember from uh, district 6 it sounds very it's the same synth I was in love with this synth. <laughs> so this, uh, the, the pet, the, I guess the kernels of, uh, the beginnings of Three Storms is very, very old. So I think I wrote it right around the time of, uh, in between District 6 and, and On Better Days. And now it's, doesn't sound anything like it at all. Oh, I love that Ravage bass. My favorite part of this, there were a couple of different, um, what is it? Is this, yeah, this, just the snare. Oh, I use the abuse kit again with another kit called the pocket kit. Layered them on top with another... So there's three kits in here. One, two, yeah, three. Oh, four, sorry. This one, because I liked this. This one. And the abuse kit. Ooh, dirty, love it. And, oh my God, are you kidding me? I just used that part just for the tom sound. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so extra. I love it. <laughs> uh, oops. Shit. Um... What is this one called? Oh yeah, the sound, dirty, love it. And then the obligatory siren sound, I mean, come on. This is another kit that I put in called the Delicate Chaos Kit. Oh, but then that kick in with that, it's called the Lee's, the, the shield base. When I heard it, I was like, yes, this is it. This is it. So fucking dirty. Love it. What is that that I added in there? Yeah, all of this is new. None of this was in the original. I literally scrapped everything and started again. So that, that about, uh, yeah. If anybody has any other questions, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Um, uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, he says that, well, I'm, I'm glad you made Lifeline Intro Final Products so catchy. And yeah, it's in like three, four, it's in three, four, but then the, everything else is in, uh, regular four so it has it's slightly offset which it's like i don't hate it so i'm gonna keep it uh and thank you photon for for saying it's a great album and thank you for listening and ryan says i hung up on gridlock heart in the moment yes thank you uh photon says i know i said it before but i absolutely love the vocals on truth bomb thank you so much appreciate it worked really really hard on that one feeling validated right now mm -hmm. uh john says three storms is such a banger seriously it works though yeah thank you 
Ryan says, how, how long does it typically take to work through everything to make one song? Oh, that's a very good question. It depends because something like Three Storms, as I, or sorry, uh, something like Gridlocked, as I talked about, well, a little bit ago, um, I worked on it from May until October, which is, would I say that that's the exception rather than the rule? That I don't normally take that long to work on a song, but it was just because I was, anyway, it's like a mental thing. Um, normally from start to finish, if maybe a month or so, if I really want to be like super picky about it, but something like Truth Bomb took me a week to make, uh, to, to write. Um, there isn't really many parts to that song, so it was relatively easy to put together. Um, but something like Three Storms was also about a week. Um, and I was working on it every single day for like as long as like my eyes could focus on it. Um, and some days I was just more productive than others. So yeah, thanks for your question. Uh, John says, thinking about it, it would be perfect way to open a live set. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Get everybody like into it. And John says, what's the shout, shout, what is the shout sample from? It's, uh, it's from Big Trouble in Little China, which is, well, the name Three Storms is from Big Trouble in Little China, <laughs> which is so geeky. But anyway, uh, Tremico, where can I buy it? You can buy it on my band camp. Um, let me reply to you. And um, if I just do band camp, uh, that's where you can go. It's available digitally only at the moment but i'll be working on getting it out on cd and vinyl in the next in the coming months so definitely check that out uh it's gonna be i'm i'm excited but i'm already starting to work on the fourth release which will be in in june but i will be letting my patrons know what my plans are uh, on an update really soon this week yeah so that's it that was all of what I of what I went through to write the record. I'm so glad that you guys have taken and listened to it. I really appreciate it. Um, just a reminder that tomorrow is Bandcamp Friday. If you know anybody that has not heard it or was interested in perhaps uh, buying the digital album, uh, we really appreciate it. It's really it's like less than ten bucks, like seven ninety nine or something like that. Um, so you know, especially during times like this, it's it's really helpful for me. Uh, to get people to go there on Pancake Fridays especially. So if you want to pass on the love, definitely put it on your socials, share it with whoever if you're so inclined. And I would really appreciate it. So, yes. So thank you for coming to my impromptu weird... I don't even know what that was. Uh, I appreciate your time. And if you are watching you don't already follow me, please go ahead, hit that follow button, turn on notifications so you know when I go live next, which is Thursday, Friday, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time, and Saturdays at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. But tomorrow I will be going uh, live at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. But then Saturday I'll be going live at 10.30. So just 30 minutes earlier because I have some other stuff to do later on. I'm doing an interview. Um, talking about the record. Trying to get people to listen to it. That's all I care about really. Just wanted to get it in people's ear holes. Um, that would be great. So definitely if you could spread the word. That would be wonderful. Oh wow. I'm outside of my frame. Too big. Anyways. Uh, yeah. So yeah, two ways you can support the channel, but first you should go and get everybody to go to my band camp and check it out. Um, there's also merch there. There's still some merch left. Larges and extra larges and one medium is left for the, it's the Simulacrum album cover T. Um, yeah, it's 30 bucks Canadian um, plus shipping, obviously. And yeah, check it out. It's really cool. I don't know. I think I'm going to do a second run for this, but it's going to be much smaller um, and yeah, in bigger sizes as well. So definitely check that out as well. So anyways, two ways you can support channel. You could go to my band camp and do that, which would really help. Uh, but you can also subscribe to this channel, which gives you access to my discord uh, for as long as it is uh, closed to uh, everybody else, except for patrons and uh, subscriber subs, Twitch subs. And so this weekend we're having a <laughs> Irish themed movie movie night and it's actually not going to be on saturday it'll be on sunday night because i'm busy i need to get a covid test on saturday sun saturday night it's gonna be a whole thing anyway um yeah so that's one of the perks i think and just a really really great community of people from all over the world so definitely check that out 
if you're interested in supporting the channel. You can also support my channel via my Patreon, which supports my music, but, you know, supports this indirectly as well. Thank you so much for weathering three fucking hours of me, my dumbass, talking to you. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your evening to listen to me. If you even want to listen to you. But thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is that too loud? Yeah. Anyways, guys. My stream deck is all the way over here because I had to move it because of Sarge. You guys have an evening that is good. And I will see you in Discord if you're part of it. Okay. I don't think I can reach any farther. Okay, bye!